Today we are going to modify a little bit the Cisco switch you can see on the chair using some parts from the dead Huawei switch you can see sitting on the bench. So uh, the problem with the Cisco one is that the cooling inside it I don't think it's good. It uses a very very noisy fan which is not a problem if the switch is situated somewhere deep inside the data center. I am using this switch uh, as a lab switch for messing around with Ethernet modules and I can't stand the sheer amount of noise that it makes. So I've opened it up and unplugged the, uh, the fan. It seems to run fine. It, I think it detects it doesn't have a fan because, well, it sh should detect and it doesn't seem to complain about this but I don't like uh, the way cooling is uh, solved in this one so we are going to take the heat sinks of the Huawei switch which is quite dead and attach them to the Cisco one using uh, thermally conductive glue that I've got specially for this job Alright, so let's go ahead and open the Huawei switch first. So it uses regular Phillips screws and there's quite a lot of them, so I'm probably gonna make... Oh, damn it, I dropped one. Uh, well, i pick it up later. Okay, we should be good to go after I undo this one. Mm, so let me pick them all up and including the one that fell on the ground and the rack ears and set it somewhere aside I want the grounding screw on I had to make a cut because my microphone is attached with a cable to this camera and the cable is quite short so to speak okay so it's let's see it's, this is a very nice design so inside a very typical arrangement we've got mm, the power supply over here very nice compact power supply which is quite powerful and it also has an option of this uh, RPS DC supply, so I'll definitely keep this one. This seems to be the main CPU. Uh, over here we've got two, four, six uh, heat sinks. I believe those might be fives because they are directly connected to those uh, to the jacks on the front. And right here we've got those two. Power D sign cards, which are DC to DC converters, and they s one of those seems to be dead. And I've looked around on eBay, and I cannot seem to get one. And even if it was possible to get one, well, if I remove this one, it's labeled master, and this one is labeled slave. So I suppose there might be also some programming involved. So. This uh, pure unobtainium, well, the switch can't be helped, can't be fixed easily, since one of those is probably dead. And uh, I've had a run around with the multimeter, and it seems that it's not generating uh, one of the core voltages. So let's go ahead and pop the hood off this one. Uh, it uses a little bit different arrangement of screws and I would not like to use any of those because this is the working unit. Do we have anything else on this side? No. Let's go ahead and unscrew the back side of it. Oh, on the back it actually uses flat heads. So I need to check whether I have flat head uh, bits here. Okay, this one seems to be the right one. Oh, and this one also has a console port on the back. Uh, which is a little bit cumbersome uh, compared to the Huawei one on the front but well the Huawei one is dead so I don't have much of a choice so let's go ahead and yeah it's uh, okay 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 we're good to go and this is a little bit older design We've got six main chips, uh, six uh, chips, uh, two pair uh, 16 jacks. So I guess it's an eight port phi. Uh, I guess it's a phi because it's the closest to the, the jacks. Mm, also, this one has uh, 
a huge row of Ethernet isolation transformers. That one did not have isolation transformers because that one could do PoE on all the ports. So, um, what else have you? Uh, what else have you got here? Well, the fan I left it unplugged and it it was running, so uh, nothing to worry about here. Uh, a custom Cisco silicon job here and here as well and here. And we've got a flat flex connector that goes to the uh, to well in this case GBIC modules because this one is a little bit older. So taking a closer look at this one, it uses actually PowerPC CPU um, to take care probably of the uh, internal to run the internal operating system to support stuff like the console or well uh, accessing the console from the net. So uh, small flat legs that goes to the front panel LEDs and probably the most uh, ridiculous amount of light guides I've ever seen in anything. Well, I've tried a couple of different things to clean this adhesive off and Itamo seems to do quite a good job after a bit of abrasion I was able to completely remove the adhesive of one of those heat sinks so it looks actually a little bit like uh, normal silicone heat sink grease so let's go ahead and apply some on the strip you really don't need much oh, that that might be even too much so I'm gonna make this sort of a like tends to flow and doesn't stick well so I cleaned the bottom of this heatsink off and let's go ahead and attach it so let me go ahead and apply some on the rest of the chips all right, so having uh, waited a bit another day, uh, I think the uh, thermal adhesive is ready. So, we got a small test bed. Uh, this computer uh, being connected to that one via the switch. There's also a thermometer attached to, well, inserted into one of those heat sinks. Okay, so the laptop has an IP address of 10.0.10 and it's going to be the sync on port 12345. Then this computer will just start piping zeros into Netcat and Netcat will send them to 10.0.10 port 12345. Right now uh, this switch is running idle with uh, those two computers connected and it's running at about 45 degrees and it's rising. Let's see what happens when we start piping data through it, so let's go ahead and just uh, run the listening netcat on this one, okay, it's running and then the netcat on here and we should see on iterate the traffic to increase to about 100 megs because it's 100 meg switch so here we go, and iterate is all green and instantaneous traffic is about 100 megabytes and let's uh, wait a second and take a look at the temperature which is still rising at 45.1 degrees celsius so far we've pushed about five and a half gigabytes of traffic and I think it's a success because it, the temperature of the heatsink is about 55 degrees celsius and when I was doing tests uh, without the heat sinks, uh, it would uh, quickly rise to about 19 well, well half the time it's, uh, it's running now I hope you've enjoyed this video well if you did leave a like and subscribe and that's all for now so See you in the next episode.